Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to topic 3.4.3, genetic diversity can arise as a result of mutation or during meiosis from the AQA A-level biology specification. First, we'll start with an overview of what gene mutations are, and then we'll focus on base deletion and base substitution mutations specifically. Note that there are other types of mutations such as addition, duplication, inversion, and translocation mutations, but these will be covered later on in the specification in topic 3.8.1. Next, we will cover mutagenic agents, which can increase the rate of gene mutations. Then we'll cover chromosome non-disjunction, which can arise spontaneously and result in mutations in the number of chromosomes during meiosis. We'll also cover the process of meiosis and how it produces daughter cells that are genetically different from each other. Within this topic, we'll also cover independent segregation and crossing over, which are factors that further increase genetic variation among daughter cells. So let's make a start. Gene mutations involve a change in the DNA base sequence of chromosomes. They can arise spontaneously during DNA replication. The two types we need to know for this part of the specification include base deletion and base substitution mutations. In base deletion mutations, one base is lost and there is a frame shift, meaning that all bases move along in one direction, which results in every codon being different. The whole reading frame shifts to the right. Base deletion mutations are very harmful as the mutation always changes the entire amino acid sequence, so the polypeptide produced will be completely different and very probably dysfunctional. In base substitution mutations, one base is substituted for another. They're not as harmful as deletion mutations and only one codon is changed, but this can still have a significant effect on the protein if the new codon codes for a different amino acid. This is because the new amino acid may have a different R group, meaning that different bonds will be formed with other amino acids, resulting in a different tertiary structure. Note that because the genetic code is degenerate, not all base substitutions cause a change in the sequence of encoded amino acids, as the new codon may still code for the same amino acid. Gene mutations occur randomly. The more times DNA replicates, the greater the chance that there will be a mutation. Most mistakes, however, are spotted and corrected by a proofreading mechanism within the cell. Next, we need to cover mutagenic agents, which increase the rate of mutations. Examples of mutagenic agents include ionizing radiation, such as X-rays and gamma rays, UV radiation, some chemicals which may interact with DNA directly or may react within cells to produce mutagenic compounds. And finally, biological agents such as viruses which may insert their viral DNA into the genome or bacteria. Next, we need to cover meiosis. In meiosis, one cell divides to produce four haploid daughter cells. Each daughter cell is genetically different and has half the number of chromosomes of the parent cell. Note that the only haploid cells in humans are the gametes, which are the sperm and the egg. They contain 23 chromosomes, i.e. only one copy of each chromosome. All the other cells are diploid cells. They have two copies of the 23 chromosomes each, which means that they have a total of 46 chromosomes. At fertilization, a haploid sperm and a haploid egg fuse to form a diploid zygote. The zygote has half the chromosomes from the father and half from the mother. Without meiosis, you get twice the number of chromosomes when the gametes fused. Note that because fertilization is random, because any sperm may fertilize any egg, zygotes are produced with different combinations of chromosomes to both parents. The mixing of genetic material increases genetic variation within a species. Before we move on to the exact mechanisms of meiosis, I think it's important to clarify just a few key terms. Homologous chromosomes have the same genes at the same loci, but may or may not have different alleles. In this diagram bottom left, we can see homologous pairs of chromosomes. They have the same genes, for example, the gene coding for eye color, which is located at the same place on each chromosome, so they're located at the same loci, but they may have different alleles. So for example, one may code for blue and one for brown eyes. 
Note that both below are homologous pairs of chromosomes, just one is before replication and one is after replication. Each of these four are chromosomes, just that on the left these two individual ones are chromatids and here on the right the chromatids have replicated to form double armed chromosomes, also known as sister chromatids. I found all of these different terms a bit confusing when doing my A-levels at first and just found it really helpful to draw out the different examples and make sure that I knew the difference. Note that meiosis is needed for sexual reproduction because it produces daughter cells with half the number of chromosomes of the parent cell. Meiosis occurs in the reproductive organs. So how does meiosis work? Before meiosis, the DNA unravels and replicates, so there are two copies of each chromosome called chromatids. The DNA condenses to form double-armed chromosomes, each made from two sister chromatids joined together by a centromere. Here we have it a bit clearer. First, the DNA unravels and replicates to form our sister chromatids. Then we have meiosis one, where the cell divides to result in two cells, each containing two sister chromatids. And then we have meiosis two, where each of the sister chromatids separate and the cells divide again to leave us with four cells, each containing two single chromatids. So how does meiosis cause variation? In the specification, we're given two examples, independent segregation and crossing over. Let's start off with independent segregation. Each homologous pair of chromosomes is made up of one chromosome from the father and one chromosome from the mother. When homologous pairs are separated during meiosis one, it is random which chromosome from each pair ends up in which daughter cell. So I've just come up with an example here. We have two homologous pairs of chromosomes. One homologous pair carries gene A, which has two alleles represented by the uppercase and lowercase a's, and the other carries gene B, which also has two alleles. When the parent cell divides, we could end up with two possible combinations. I've only shown the first division here, but in meiosis, these cells would then go on to divide one more time. The number of different gamete combinations can be calculated by two to the power of n, where n is the number of homologous pairs of chromosomes of the original cell. For example, humans have 23 pairs, meaning that we would do two to the power of 23. So for humans, we have 8,388,608 different possible gamete combinations. Next, we have crossing over and this happens during meiosis one. During crossing over, homologous pairs of chromosomes come together and pair up. The chromatids twist around each other and bits of chromatid cross over. Here we have it on a diagram. We have a homologous pair of chromosomes. They come together and bits of chromatid cross over. So although each chromosome started off with either all uppercase A and B alleles or lowercase A and B alleles, they now have mixed uppercase and lowercase a and b alleles. Note that crossing over will occur all along the chromosomes at many different points. Crossing over means that each of the four daughter cells produced contains chromatids with different combinations of alleles. This results in further genetic variation among daughter cells. Finally, we have non-disjunction. Mutations in the number of chromosomes can arise spontaneously by chromosome non-disjunction during meiosis. Non-disjunction is when sister chromatids do not separate properly during meiosis. This leads to an uneven distribution of chromosomes. And this can occur during both meiosis one and two. Overall, non-disjunction means that gametes have either one extra or one less chromosome. If the gametes then take part in fertilization, the zygote will have either an extra pair in one of the pairs, something known as trisomy, or only one chromosome instead of a pair, which is known as monosomy. Overall, you do not get homologous pairs. Great, so we've covered gene mutations and base deletion and base substitution mutations specifically. We've had a look at mutagenic agents and also non-disjunction. We've had a look at the mechanisms of meiosis and how independent segregation and crossing over result in genetic variation among daughter cells. 
That would be it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Feel free to comment, subscribe, add any ideas or suggestions. Next time, we'll be looking at genetic diversity and adaptation.